Triumph is God's ultimate plan for our lives. The Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church, 2300 Edgefield, Highway North, Aiken, South Carolina, invites you to join us every Sunday for a Truth and Triumph worship experience. Pastor Lester A. Smalls is a man with a testimony who preaches and teaches the gospel of Jesus Christ with such soundness and clarity even a baby can understand it. Seeking true worship, great fellowship, and sound doctrine? Join us at Bell Grove. We're located in North Aiken County. We are also convenient to the surrounding cities of Edgefield, Johnston, Ridge Springs, and North Augusta. Worship every Sunday with Sunday School at 9.30 a.m., Devotion and Praise at 10.30 a.m., and Call to Worship at 11 a.m. Also, join us for the Truth and Triumph Word Ministry every Monday night at 9 p.m. on WAAW 94.7 FM Radio. We can be reached at 803-649-1706 or bellgrovebaptist.org or on Facebook. Good morning. Truly, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Deacon Michael Johnson, and I do bring you greetings from the Bell Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Aiken, South Carolina, where the pastor is Lester A. Smalls. This is Sunday, May the 17th, 2020, and today's Sunday School lesson is Practice Justice. We're going to be coming from Bible Study Guide number 12. Our Bible background is Jeremiah 21. Our printed text is Jeremiah 21, verses 8 through 14. Our devotional reading is Psalms 86, verses 1 through 13. Aim for change. By the end of the lesson, we will discover divine justice described by Jeremiah expressed gratitude that God is a God of justice and endeavor to be just and advocate for justice. Let's turn to our devotional reading, Psalms 86. Psalm 86, and again, we're gonna be reading verses one through 13. And it reads, Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am whole. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your work. All nations whom you have May shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. And verse number 13, for great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the death of Sheba. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we just come now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, just giving you thanks for you being the great God that you are. For you are great, and you are greatly to be praised. We ask now, God, that you allow your Holy Spirit, oh God, just to come into the midst right now, oh God. Oh God, that you would just have your way, that you would prick hearts, oh God, that you would open minds, oh God, 
that you would allow your word, oh God, to fall on fertile ground, oh God. Just prepare the ground, oh God. Just prepare our hearts, oh God, to receive your word on this day. And that we may go out and practice your word, to do your word. And we thank you for that right now, God. Just have your way right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just to give a little background, uh, we are coming uh, from the book of Jeremiah. And again, our printed text is going to be uh, Jeremiah, uh, the 21st chapter, the verses 8 through 14. But uh, let's just give a little background. We're going to start the background just, re just by reading a little bit about Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah is the prophecy of a man divinely called in his youth from the priest city of Ammon. A heartbroken prophet with a heartbreaking message. Jeremiah labors for more than 40 years proclaiming a message of doom to the stiff-necked people of Judah. Despised and persecuted by his countrymen, Jeremiah bathed in his harsh prophecies and tears of compassion. His broken heart causes him to write a broken book, which is difficult to arrange chronologically or topically. But through his sermons and signs, he faithfully declares that surrender to God's will is the only way to escape calamity. And we all heard and know that Jeremiah is called um, the weeping prophet. Before we get into our printed text, and we know that it starts with uh, verse number eight. So there's something that was, that's going on prior to verse number eight. So let's go back and just read a little bit about that. Let's just read uh, Jeremiah 21, uh, verses one through seven, just to give us a little background, and then we'll be able to, to move forward. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent to him Pasha, the son of Melchi, Micaiah, and Zephaniah, the son of Masanhi, the priest saying, Please inquire of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, makes war against us. Perhaps the Lord would deal with us according to all his wonderful works, that the king may go away from us. Then Jeremiah said to them, Thus you shall say to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, which you fight against the king of Babylon and the Chaldeans who besiege you outside the wall, and I will assemble them in the midst of this city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand, and with a strong arm, even in the anger and fury and great wrath, I will strike the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of the great pestilence. And afterwards, says the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, his servants and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence and the sword and the famine into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life, and shall strike them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, or have pity, or mercy. Um, again, a little bit of more background. We're talking about justice and the prophets uh, in this, this spring quarter here. This is the 12th lesson in the spring quarter, and uh, we have one more lesson uh, before we go to the uh, summer quarter. So we've been talking about justice in the prophets, and even before Jeremiah came on the scene, there were many uh, prophets that came uh, to warn God's people, Israel, about the sin, about the uh, injustice that we're doing to people in ways of they had scales that were not balanced. They were cheating uh, the folks. Uh, they were not taking care of the poor or, uh, or the widow. They were just simply not looking out for the people, but had their own agenda in mind. And we can see that in, in today's society because this is our Sunday school lesson. It is a lesson 
uh, to be learned and we do life application, how can we study this word of God and then apply it to our everyday lesson? And that, that's why we come to Sunday school. That's why we study the word of God, how to be a better people, how to live as a Christian. Everything that we need is in the word of God. All right, let us move forward now. And we, you had the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, Judah. All right, the northern kingdom has already fallen. It, it fell to the Assyrians. Um, however, over time, um, the Assyrians, they lost their power grip in the area, which created a vacuum, a power vacuum, in which Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was able to come in and, and take control uh, of this territory. And in today's lesson, um, they really already have taken control over the city. They're really just outside the, the city gates. And uh, let's go into the lesson. Verse number eight. And it reads, I'm coming out of the King James Version. And verse number eight reads, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I, sub I set before you the way of life and the way of death. Now, when verses one through seven, which we've already read, um, so uh, King Zedekiah, he, he's looking for a way out. Uh, it's still with him, his city of uh, being um, besieged. He, has, he still has uh, some sense of arrogance and um, the people also have some sense where well, they do have a sense of uh, false security. So in what we see here, they're kind of treating God like a light switch to be able to, to turn them on and turn them off whenever um, you need them. But not so in this particular case. When he sends um, Asher and Zephaniah, Zephaniah to uh, inquire and get a prophecy from Jeremiah, um, basically uh, his bubble was burst uh, immediately. Listen to this. God himself will be against them. Their sin, they have sinned consistently and have rejected his kingship over them. In this particular situation, um, they're going to have to, in order to win, they're going to have to give up. Um, which is, is, is rather counterintuitive, but I'm, I'm just, I'm reminded, when I was reading this, I was reminded about the experiment and uh, the experiment went like they put a banana in a jar, which had a narrow uh, opening to it. The monkey was able to reach in and grab the banana or the, grab the, the fruit, whatever fruit it was. But with the monkey or the animal grabbing the fruit, he was not able to pull his hand back out of the jar and thus entrapping him, his own self. All he had to do was just let go. And that's what we have to do in, in, in life. When we, we find ourselves in, in certain situations, you know, um, we have to let go and let God. And as I've already forestated, every answer to our, our problems, every solution uh, to the situations that we face, everything is in the word of God. And also, I was reminded of when David messed up and, and did a census and, and, and wanted to count the people. And, uh, and, and the best thing for us to do in, in situations like that is to just to give ourselves just over to God. And, and let's just go to that right now. Let's go to the book of Samuel. And it's Samuel, 2 Samuel, the 24th chapter. In the 14th verse, it, it, it's good to know the Lord, and David knew the Lord. And uh, Gad came to uh, David, you know, telling him the three options that he had. And David took the, the, took the latter option, or the third option. And it, I'm not going to read all of it, but in verse number 14, here's what the, and David said to Gad, I am in great distress. He's, he's messed up now. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord. 
for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. One of the things that I love about David, uh, I, David is a, he, he's characterized as a, as a man after God's own heart. When David messed up, he knew how to turn back to God and just, just, uh, and just repent and just ask God for uh, forgiveness. In this particular case right here, God waited patiently for centuries for his people to repent from worshiping other gods. Now the time of judgment is final. And I just want to iterate or reiterate to you, um, God does not tolerate sin. I'm going to say that again. God does not tolerate sin. Even though this went on for centuries and, and centuries, God, he's long-suffering. Uh, he is a, a merciful God. He is, that's what he is. And, and the whole thing, oh, the whole print, the whole premises here is, um, and for us, is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The truth of the matter is God is a God of love. Uh, he is compassionate, but he does not tolerate sin. And it, the, his word says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So all we have to do is just give it over to God. And he'll make everything all right if we surrender to him. He also says in, in 2 Chronicles, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the evil ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. God is an awesome God, y'all. Even now, God always provides a way out. It is, it, is, it is the grace of God. That grace is unmerited favor. Uh, when we sin, we deserve death. That's what the word of God says, that the wages of sin is death. But God, being so merciful, he sent his only begotten son that uh, he put all of our sin death on Jesus. And no matter what situation you are in today, my friend, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad it is, know that all sin death, past, present, and future, it has been nailed to the cross. Uh, Jesus Christ himself has, has paid the price. Moving on to verse number nine. And it reads, He that by, abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldean, that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be a prey for him. Again, the Jerusalem, the way Jerusalem, we're going to talk about this in some latter verses, the way Jerusalem was situated, it was on three sides, it was, uh, it was uh, surrounded by valleys, and on the other side, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, the north side was like a hill. So it was pretty much, it was, it, in other words, it was a naturally fortified city. So that gave uh, people hope. But there was no hope for those hiding behind Jerusalem's wall. Jeremiah summarizes ways God judges his people for their unfaithfulness to him in the covenant. And it was a sword, it was a famine, it was a pestilence. But all three uh, bring about death from different sources. The sword is, is by the war. The, um, the Babylonian is, is uh, sieging them. Famine, a lack of food due to a lack of rain, basically a drought, and pestilence, uh, whether it's diseases or plagues. God has some stipulations. It's uh, the covenant that he made with Israel. Um, it's his covenant are his promises. And I just want to just go to the book of Leviticus and just read just a little bit about some of the blessings of God. And then I'm, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the curses of God. Let's look at Leviticus 26. 
verses 1 through 9, real quick. And it reads, you shall not make idols for yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last till the time of vintage, and the vintage shall last till the time of summer. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in the, your land safely. I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. You will chase your enemies, and you shall fall by the sword, and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. And verse number nine, for I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. So these are the blessings of the covenant, you know, that the people have entered into with the Lord. But if they do not, if they break the covenant, I just want to read verse number 17. This is if they break the covenant. The Lord says, I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. That's a bad situation to be in, friend. It, it, I was just thinking that it, it's not good to be in the hands of an angry God. But it ain't a bad place to be. And, and that's what David did. Even though God was angry uh, and was not pleased, David turned himself over to the Lord because David knew and we know that the Lord is merciful. So we just got, even though we messed up, um, it, re it, re it requires punishment. If you mess up, it, re it just requires punishment. Just take the punishment we learn from it, and you're able to move on and do better. As we know better, we do better. Okay, also in this verse, God calls the people to trust him by giving up a way, by giving a way of escape, and that is by surrendering to the Babylonians. In life, things happen that sometimes don't make any sense to us at all. It, it just doesn't. But walking with the Lord, spending time with the Lord, knowing God, even in bad situations, God is still faithful. And we just have to know that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. Even though we, we might not understand it, uh, we just, we're just called to be obedient. And if we are obedient, God will be faithful and do his part. Verse number 10, for I, have, for I have set my face against this city for evil and not for good, says the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Now, Jerusalem, the, the city, this walled city right here, it will be handed over to the Babylonians. The Babylonians, even though they're, they're a powerful nation and have a, a, a powerful um, army, and they are physically, they are able to come in and take the city. But in this instance right here, God himself is against the city and is giving the city over into the hands um, of the Babylonians. And the king of Babylon here uh, we're talking about Nebuchadnezzar at this time. He, he is the king 
but he is also being used as an instrument of God for the judgment of God's people. Uh, again, Jerusalem is given into their hands. And I just want to, I thought about that and I thought about what it says over in the book of James. James 1, the, fir uh, the first chapter of James, verses 2 through 3. It says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And it, verse number 4, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So we see here, even though the judgment that's coming against the people, you know, it is harsh, um, but it's, it's a, it is what God demands because God is a sovereign God. He, he has all power in his hand. And the people of Israel, they've seen when, they, when enemies came against them in the past and they went to God, God has delivered them over and over and over again. But this time is not so. And, and I'm glad that God does not let us get away with sin because the word of God said he chastens those that he, he loves. And the, and the reason for that chastisement and the reason for today's judgment it, it, it's really not, it, it is to punish the people, but it's also a way to bring the people into correction. That's what a loving God does. That's what a loving father does. That, that's what a loving mother does. It, it corrects the waywardness of the child. And God corrects the waywardness of his people because he does love us. Verse number 11. In touching the house of the king of Judah, say, hear ye the word of the Lord. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to group verses number 11 and 12 together. And, and it goes on to say, O house of David, thus says the Lord, execute judgment in the morning and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury go out like fire and burn, that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. So verse number 11 here, it really addresses uh, the kings here, not only the kings, um, um, but also the people that are in the royal um, court. So basically, no one escapes here. And here, uh, also in this uh, verse number 11, uh, we come across a, um, uh, a term called mishpah. And mish, mishpah is, is basically... It's just justice. And that's what, our, that's what our lesson is about today. Practicing, uh, practice justice. When you practice, you, you repeat. It's a repetitive thing. Uh, the reason for the practice is to become good at it or, or, to pre, or to perfect it. That's what it means to practice. And to practice just. What is just? Uh, doing the right thing by our fellow man. So we should practice doing the um, things that are good and right uh, to our fellow man. Because even though someone uh, does evil to us, we should not do evil back to them. Because again, as I have already forestated, all the answers, everything that we need is in uh, the word of God. And the word of God says, recompense no man, evil for evil. Uh, in, in the book of Matthew, it, it tells us that um, it tells us that we should be salt and, and we should be light and that we should pray for those that despitefully use us, you know. And it also says uh, in the word of God, he says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So it's not for you to go out and, and take, ven uh, take vengeance, take ven ven vengeance, um, because uh, what the situation that we've seen down uh, in Brunswick, Georgia, uh, that actually happened at the beginning of the year, towards the beginning of the year, but is really now coming to the light, wherein some people uh, thought to take justice into their own hand. And when they did that, 
it resulted into a death, a, a needless death. And if we just follow the word of God and obey the word of God, that is our way out. There is some ideologies in this in this country, to be just to be frank, that are that are not good. They're they're not Christian um, behaviors. They're they're actually contradicted uh, to Christian behaviors or or what the Word of God says. And we're going to be talking about that a little later on. How we how and and this is what happened. Actually, what happened back then? They were not looking out for the poor. They were taking advantage of the poor. They were they were just not doing. Uh, the right thing. In verse number 12, the king, the leader, the one that's supposed to be in charge, uh, the one that's supposed to be looking out for the people uh, to protect. He's supposed to protect the poor. He's supposed to execute judgment um, if someone is wrong. Um, it, it says here that uh, adhering to the law of Moses on how how people are to be treated. And the word of God just, it tells us how we ought to treat one another. And, and this, this script here when it says in the morning, uh, that is referring to um, uh, daily or on a regular basis uh, that, uh, that this judgment should be executed. Verse number 13. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitant of the valley, and rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter into our habitation? Um, that's that high-minded mind, uh, that, that high-minded thinking that is... Uh, so wrong and eventually you know it'll, it'll get you in trouble it this right here verse number uh, 13 um, it really addresses um, Jerusalem geographical characteristics uh, again like I said earlier it's bordered uh, three sides by valley and then there, there's a hill to the north um, uh, both the valley and the plain make the inhabitants feel secure in the face of military advance, advances. Jerusalem was, was on a hill. It was a walled city. So basically, um, it, the way it was situated, it was a defensive stronghold. And it, so it was hard for uh, uh, an army to come uh, and besiege it. But when the hand of God is in the midst, it, it, it really doesn't matter. That way of thinking, thinking, who can come in, you know? We're fortified, we're protected. Who can come in and, 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 and come against us? My friend, do not have a false sense of security when it comes to your money. Do not have a false sense of security when it comes to your position. Do not have a false sense of security when it comes to your neighborhood. It does not matter. When God is against you and when he has said, I set my face against you, it, it's, it's a done deal. Now, verse number 14. But I will punish you According to the fruit of your doing, says the Lord, and I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things about it. Now, again, uh, the walls, it will not protect when God is, is set, uh, and he's going to get through it. And I, when I thought about the walls, I thought about the mighty walls of Jericho. And how those mighty walls came tumbling down. It, 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 it does say in the word of God, if God be for us, who can be against us? But when God is against you, there's no army, no amount of money, 
your status, your position, nothing will be able to help you. You just, you just have to fall down on your knee and say, I yield, I yield, I yield. It's all about repentance, and that repentance is, is turning away from, from what is wrong, what you've been doing wrong, and just to turn back to Jesus to Christ, you know, and he'll set you on a plain path. Um, I just want to encourage everybody that, you know, God does love you. He, he's, he's concerned about you. He says in his word that you, he, he, you were fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, and, and he, he has so much love. It goes back to um, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish. Whosoever, whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's good news right there. I always like to leave you with a, a golden nugget and to let you know that God does love you. And, and our golden nugget today is coming from the 29th verse of, of Jeremiah in number 11. Where God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future in a world. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for the study of your word in this day, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're going to do, Lord God. We just ask, oh God, that you will just order our steps according to your will and your way, Lord God, that we may do the things, O oh God, that you require us to do, O oh God, to provide and look out for one another, Lord God, to do good and not evil, Lord God. O oh God, just prick our hearts, O oh God, and we just love you, we bless you, and we do it. We glorify you, Father, in Jesus' name.